Hey, hey, hey. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting over a cold, so forgive my voice, but happy Saturday. I hope you are having a good day. I wanted to come on and have just a really quick conversation about something that I see a lot of, and I don't think people talk about it enough. So um, one of the things that I was talking to one of my clients about last week was an experience she had with her family where she was satisfied with her meal. And this is this is a little bit of an aside before we get into the story. So a lot of times um, people who I work with have issues with setting boundaries around the things that other people say and the things that they accept that people say when they're eating their food. So if that's you, you definitely want to listen to this conversation. But um, one of the things that I was talking to this particular client about was her experience with eating out with her family and she was like satisfied with her meal but her uh, one of her parents said something to her similar to the effect of like there are starving kids in Africa right and this is something that I hear a lot of this was something that I actually heard growing up I don't even remember who said it but I remember it, it kind of like played in the back of my mind right there are starving kids in Africa now one I absolutely hate this phrase because you don't have to go all the way to Africa to find starving kids. Now, I have theories of who started these types of sayings, but um, you don't have to put your poverty on those people over there minding their business, okay? There are people in Africa that aren't starving. We talk about those people, no. And you don't have to go all the way to Africa for that. There are starving kids in North Carolina, starving kids in Ohio, starving kids all over the U.S., okay? Probably some in your neighborhood which is not the point of this conversation. I, I, I typically have, you know, just a little a little thing about that. But um, one of the things that uh, I talk to my clients about are the stories that drive their habits and their actions, right? And when you constantly hear things like there are starving children anywhere in the world, and that's the reason why you should appreciate the food that you have and you should eat all of the food that you have on your plate, a lot of times that rolls into your adulthood, which also rolls into your habit of overeating. Now, uh, over 50% of my clients have to deal with these particular things, and this is something that we work through because... Because um, they've been told at some point in their life that there are starving children somewhere in the world. Therefore, they should be, um, you know, finishing their food, which a lot of times parents, if you're saying this to your kids or if this has been said to you, really pay attention to the portions that are on the plate. Because a lot of times children will stop eating because they are the closest to their connection that um, tells them when to eat, when to stop and those kinds of things. Now, throughout life, we kind of get away from that with jobs, school parents, all those good, all those different things that um, kind of control when we eat, how we eat more times than not. But children tend to stop sooner than um, adults do because they're close to their connection that they're born with that actually helps them to stop eating, right? So when children stop eating and we tell them things like there are starving children somewhere in the world, so they need to keep eating their food, we need to one, pay attention to the fact that we're getting them away from their, their body's natural reaction to when they're satisfied but also we're forcing them into habits of overeating if they more times than not the portion was too big for that child anyway a lot of us parents don't realize that even though we're making smaller portions than we would make for ourselves the portions tend to still be larger than the portion that the child needs so we're forcing them into habits of overeating which also leads to extra energy extra fat right your body is holding on to this extra stuff because it doesn't need it their body told them to stop eating when it was time for them to stop eating but us being the parents and the people who we don't want to waste food right we want to make sure that they're eating enough and all of those different things so for whatever reason um th those particular things are being said they are getting away from their connection with their body that's telling them when to stop right and a lot of us adults not even the children not even as parents just plain adults right a lot of us kind of fall into that same space of overeating because it's a habit that we brought from our childhood a lot of times we don't stop to look at the habits that are um, kind of controlling so, or the stories and the habits and things, hi Tracy, that are kind of controlling some of the things that we're saying. So if you have ever been told that there are starving children anywhere in the world, right, then I highly encourage you to check in with yourself and see if that story is something that's driving your current eating habits. More times than not, if my clients have heard this coming up, it is something that they currently have playing in the back of their head that is controlling the way that they're eating meaning more times than not they overeat they tend to not want to waste food so even if they're physically satisfied they tend to overeat because they don't want to throw that food away another thing is that sometimes they don't want to throw food away
away even if it's like in the refrigerator so they kind of force themselves to eat food that they don't necessarily want to have and that is absolutely playing a part in your healthier habits and your journey to weight loss success so if that sounds like you as a parent and you're telling your child you know there are starving kids somewhere in the world you need to eat your food you know i'm with love, I just kind of encourage you not to say that to them. Um, but if, if it's something that you've heard as a child growing up, then I encourage you to kind of just check into those stories and see how those stories play out in your habits. If it's something where you are overeating, you tend to, um, there are strategies that you can use for this as well. And these are things that I talk to my clients about. So if you're interested in that, you're more than welcome to slide in my inbox. But um, the, you definitely want to pay attention to those stories and how they're affecting the way that you eat. If you find yourself overeating to physical discomfort, I mean, like you have the itis more times than not when you finish eating, you're overeating. And that likely comes from some story that you've adopted as your own that's kind of leading that habit. So. I hope this was helpful for you. Even though, you know, this video may have been helpful, there's nothing better than you getting that customized support. So if you want to have a customized look at some of the stories that may be driving some of your habits that are unsupportive of the goals that you have, then you're more than welcome to slide in my inbox. I have, I want to say nine um, weight loss strategy audits available for the rest of September. They're complimentary and we just sit down and talk about the things that you are doing in your weight loss journey and the next steps that can help you to actually create the results that you want to create. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can message me. Just say weight loss strategy audit. You can say, hey, and we'll just talk about it. But um, I hope this was helpful. Have a happy Saturday and I'll talk to you soon.